Good morning everybody. Here we are working on the spring project again and I'm still working on this large flower. So I was thinking I'd done with all the light colour but of course I've got all this in here to go. So I'm currently working on the mid colour. And just simply stitching where it's already been painted in. One thing I've found has made it easier to get the stitches going in the right direction is to stitch the center one in and then work either side of that. I have a packet of needles all the same size, <laughs> newly purchased. I have, uh, let me see here, threaded up lots of the colours that I'm using. So that I can just keep stitching. of a cloudy day here today. Sun pokes through sometimes. Now when you're stitching um, in this way, it's essentially satin stitch. <laughs> I started out with the aim of doing long and short stitch but uh, I think I remarked last time that it was ending up long and long stitch <laughs> yeah when you're satin stitching you can actually just keep going in the one direction as I currently am but of course on big sections that's going to use a lot of thread because you're using the thread all across the back of it as well. So what you can do, so you can see here I was stitching and doing sort of you know running it across the back. These sections have also been stitched but you can't see much thread happening on the background and that's because instead of going in and in here and then out here and in here and then out here and then in here you actually come out here on the back and then go in right next to it so you're sort of doing this sort of stitching still laying the stitches really really close to one another but you're not doing this and therefore you're only using half as much thread been outside cleaning the pool and hanging out the washing this morning and so now I've come inside I'm finding it a little hard <laughs> for my eyes to adjust
It would be nice to not have a pool. <laughs> My husband was adamant we were going to move. Wherever we moved would not have a pool. But unfortunately, I loved this house too much. And it's... I guess a little more difficult to find houses in my area of this size without a pool. Honestly, the amount of work that they take and the expense, just even little things like topping them up with water. Um, it, it's huge. And if you add up, <laughs> you know, how much we spent per swim <laughs> for the few times that we swim in a, in a year, oh my goodness, it, it does not add up and you would think you know oh well in summer it's lovely to have a pool here because it's so hot that's actually the problem it is so hot <laughs> you you can't actually go outside you don't want to So we investigated, I investigated before we moved here and said to my husband, I've, I've found out you can actually get pools filled in for $10,000. And then we wouldn't have a pool. But the real estate agent told us that that would be a $100,000 mistake. So here we are. And the pool had what's called solar heating. So we thought, well, that sounds good and economical. Extends the swimming season of the pool and it's solar, right? Well, the way solar heating works is that a pump is required to pump the water all the way to the top of your roof. And that's quite a distance at my house because our land is on a slope. So it's in two levels and the pool is on the very bottom level. And then our house is two stories. So the pump has to pump the water all the way up to the top of the roof. And then the solar aspect of it is that it simply runs through these tubes that are sitting on the roof and are therefore, you know, hot from the sun. And so that heats the water. Um, and long story short the pump wasn't working and so we paid to have that repaired it actually cost me twelve thousand dollars in repairs when we moved in to the pool it was leaking the plug down the bottom was loose and the pump wasn't working etc before we bought the house we had it inspected by a pool company who told us everything was fine anyway When I realised the electricity expense of pumping the water up to the roof, when the pump broke for the second time, I have not replaced it. I am not paying all that electricity and wasting all that electricity. It's nuts.
how do I make sense of that? Because that's an inner petal and that one's an outer petal. But it's the same colour, isn't it? Or is it a different colour? Ah. Silly me, there's actually four colours. I was thinking there were three. Hmm. Okay, well I'll worry about that later. For now I'm going to carry on stitching. back I've got that dreaded iPhone storage full message and it cut me off recording I hate it when I get that message because it always takes about an hour to sort it out I've solved the outline idea when I was stitching the letters in the pink and green variegated and it was too pale another one I tried was this deep red burgundy so I think that shall become the outlines I believe I didn't notice there were four colours. <laughs> there we have it, today's accidental knot and needle and threading. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes.
Okay, so I'm going to keep stitching all of this pale pink and um, then I'll come back with this deeper one and do some outlining. Hello everyone, welcome back. So I've stitched the main areas of the piece now and I left the white because I didn't want to lose the definition of these heart shapes, the outlines that I need to do. So I'm doing those first. And I did have a trial of it down here and that, that did work really well. Stem stitching the outlines. Okay, you get the idea. So I'm going to continue doing my stem stitch all the way around the darker outlines of this. And I do have another piece of the fabric for reference for where the lines need to go in the sections that have already been covered up with stitching. So I've done the outline here before I've stitched the pale colour of the petal. Because I wanted to make sure I didn't lose it, didn't lose where the outline was completely. And uh, It's, it's actually quite a nice thing it's um gives you a you know a border <laughs> to go to so maybe that that is a good strategy do your outline first Not sure if you could hear that bird then we made a bit of a discovery this morning so when i was looking out the kitchen window i saw a couple of birds in the grevillea i've not seen before <laughs> my daughter said that they look like little vultures um they've sort of got that you know skinny bald looking head and um, a plumage of feathers around the chest and so we looked them up. She thought it was another type of wattle bird because it makes that similar sort of annoying noise. <laughs> um, sort of like a chicken laying an egg. But when we looked it up, she found it was a noisy fryer bird. So there you go. I've been blaming Mr. Wattle Bird for all the annoying bird sounds. <laughs> but the noisy fryer bird is uh, the singer of some of those songs. I 
think I just unthreaded my needle. But I'll keep going on the off chance I didn't. Oh, I didn't. Look. <laughs> so lucky. Gosh, I'm enjoying this. It really is just so lovely. Seeing it come together. I feel very accomplished. <laughs> Look at the flower I've embroidered. Even though it's completely cheating and just colouring in what's already there. I think it's a really good way to learn. About um, colour use and... Obviously, these aren't realistic flowers, they're very stylized. Oh, that stitch didn't quite go high enough, I'm not happy with that. Let's take it out and do that again. Never on camera can I thread a needle. Alright, take that up higher. So I've got several projects on the go. And um really enjoying that because when you get a bit tired you just set it aside and pick up another thing because I do I get bored very easily so it's nice to switch between all my projects But it really has been a strong theme in all my work lately. It's all been sort of embroidery. I'm just really obsessed with it at the moment. I haven't done any sort of sewing journaling, you know, where you display. Because I'm like, actually, all of these pieces I'm working on are playing pieces. So I feel like that sort of satisfies that desire to test and see what happens that's happening in all of my work now it's it's interesting actually it's that process of sewing journaling on, on pieces that where it doesn't matter has freed me up to just experiment all the time just to try give it a go Hopefully I'm staying on camera a bit more successfully. I've learnt that if I anchor this hand that holds the hoop 
holds the fabric down on the table and don't let it move. I think that's keeping everything centered on the camera more. So I'm just leaning on, this is a fabric covered, it's a padded cutting mat on the other side's a cutting, cutting mat. And this side that I'm leaning on is meant to be an ironing board. It was never very successful <laughs> as a ironing board. Um, the When you ironed on it, the heat made the cutting mat on the back buckle. The wool mats are much better. Although I will say I have an issue with the wool mats in that the little craft iron gets very hot and uh, if you accidentally touch the wool mat with that iron hot that hot it melts of course the mat a bit Oh dear, I unthreaded. Okay, let's turn it over and thread her up again. Whoops. <laughs> Through the needle. Oh gosh, we're getting close to the end of the thread, aren't we? A couple more stitches, maybe. Where was I? Okay, I'm going to end that there. Do you keep a container of tools on your Near you when you're sewing. I think that's really interesting to see. So I've got Unpicker. Love these scissors. They're my favourite scissors because they're just so versatile. I have a little sharpener and I can just use them for everything. I use them for everything. I cut out paper with them. I sharpen them. I cut out fabric. Um, don't cut wire ribbons with them that would put a dent in the blade no go for that um, but otherwise virtually everything uh, another little pack of tiny scissors that i picked up when i was in the city with no sewing with me <laughs> so, these are always handy and because they've got the little case you know you can throw them in your sewing bag when you're traveling screwdriver for my embroidery hoop this is one of those ones that's got you know interchangeable bits so that you can change out the end very handy what I'd love to find is just a small screwdriver that's Phillips head on one side and a flat on the other you know that's all I need Rotary cutter, 
Uh, that was the crochet hook I was using to make these little flowers for this project. A pen, water soluble marker, water brush to wash off the water soluble marker. Random pink pen that I don't even know where it came from and why it's here. And um, my, this is the chalk chalk pencil, mechanical pencil. You can buy other colour chalks as well. So I've got pink and green as well. So that's also very handy. Excuse me for all the noise as I throw all that back in. It does actually, the outline goes down around there. So before I do this white, I think I'll do that outline so I don't lose it. is also outlined around here don't know that you'll really notice it because all of that is going to be colored in in red as well but I will do it just in case if it stands out and we notice it as an outline good if it blends in okay so that surely you heard that one I'd say that's the noisy fry bird going That's that while I'm here and the red is in my needle. I'll keep going with stitching these little red sections. We get a little knot. Can't see one. Oh, I sewed through the thread. Did 
that release it and make it worse. It's just the tiniest whisker of a hair hanging on still. Okay, so I'm going to keep stitching the outline and finish the creamy pink in there. And I'll come back and do the four stainless. Okay, so initially I thought I was going to do these in beading or perhaps uh, silk covered knot, but I didn't have a bead large enough nor silk the right colour. The only silk I had was this very pale yellow and I think that would just disappear. So I found in my stash this Clark's Anchor Cotton Brode and it's colour 0302. These are something I'd never ever seen before. I was gifted a whole bunch of them and they're very vibrant and I thought that would stand out beautifully. So I'm just doing French knot with three wraps. I think it was three. Maybe I did four. We can undo it if it's not. Yeah, that's looking small. Must have been four. One, two, three, four. Pull it firmly. And in it goes. <laughs> it's always fun trying to find the right spot. There we go. One, two, three, four. That's got the right vibrancy and the 3D I was hoping for. Two elements complete. The poetry and an embroidered flower. Yeah, I'm excited to see what will be next for this project. What will I come up with next? Well, thanks for watching everyone. Thanks for your lovely comments and your feedback. Hitting the like button. I appreciate all of you. And I'll see you next time.